Welcome to Pet Fix World. We are so excited to introduce you to fantastic pet parents, pet experts, and talented pet clothing designers from all around the world. We are also very grateful. Thank to you, our podcast is in the 0.5% globally ranked podcast. Woohoo! Yeah! We also have a magazine, so go to Amazon, look for Pet Fix World magazine, and here we are. My name is Vasi. I'm your host. A very passionate pet photographer who likes to give some tips and tricks on how you can utilize your phone when they create beautiful memories, level up your social media and so much more. And of course, we are very passionate to help rescue organizations to share with you incredible events from all around the world. Pets are family everywhere. So let's have fun, listen to our podcast, enjoy it and see you soon. Hello, hello world and hello friends. Hi, I hope everyone is doing well. Hi world, hi friends. So here it is another wonderful day. Uh, and uh, I'm very grateful for our speaker today for coming uh, because oh, yeah, the truth is me. that, you know, every day it's special and we know how much we love our four babies. We know how special and dear they are for us, uh, but also, unfortunately, we know that sometimes they cannot stay with us forever. And when this moment happens in our lives, each of us, unfortunately, takes it in a different way. And this is why sometimes we need to seek the help of professionals to be able to help us through this difficult most devastating times in our lives and uh here it's uh, you know very special thank you to my very dear friend stephanie uh rogers she is a professional counselor uh she was you know this is her second time coming to the show also i'm very grateful um she participated she gave us an article in our magazine which i will show a little later uh, and uh, you can always find her on embrace your grief, uh, embracing your uh, embracing your grief dot com. Uh, and without further ado, I want to thank you so much, Stephanie, for being with us today on the show. So, how are you doing? Doing well. I'm I'm very very happy to see you again, Bossy, and to be back with everybody. Thank you. I, I feel the same way. I remember when we did the first interview with uh, Jennifer from Celebrity Catwalk, who was so generous, uh, you know, to connect us. So many people messaged us uh, and just were so grateful for the wisdom, for everything, what you share with us, because when it happens to us and, you know, I went through losing my first doggies and you also specialize for people as well and for pets what is makes you very unique but all of us we take it in a different way and also a lot of times comes back many years later and it's, it's hard it's very hard yeah it is it comes back um because we never grieve just one loss so actually grief is one of those things that gets more challenging as we get older. You know, there are things in our lives that um, get a little bit easier as we age. Um, for instance, <clears throat> when you have a, a fender bender car wreck when you're 18, it's the world is coming to an end. When you have it when you're 38, it's a pretty major inconvenience, but you're not terrified. When you have one when you're 58, as long as nobody's hurt, it's just no big deal because you've been through it so many times. But grief is doesn't work that way. Grief is really kind of just the opposite because every time that we experience a new loss, it's like the door opens and all the other losses we've ever experienced in our life rush that door, particularly if they're um, losses that we haven't really processed or acknowledged. Wow. And uh, I know that you're absolutely right. And, and that's why it's very, I would say, I can't even put it into words. It's very necessarily topic. 
And I know that as a person who I even told you before we press, you know, the button record and go live that uh, one of my very dear clients for many years, she just lost her doggy a few weeks ago. And I was actually very happy. At least we photographed it. And she just messaged me like people go through very difficult times. And I want to ask you, like, what is the most common uh question regarding how people handle grief well when you're talking specifically about the loss of an animal companion i think what people are usually most um, overwhelmed by is just how intense the grief is um, my clients almost always at some point say to me this is grief like I've never felt before. Why is it so intense? Why is it so hard? Um, as opposed to the loss of my parents or my siblings or even my partner. Um, not that those losses aren't devastating, but there's people tend to be really overwhelmed by the intensity of the grief that follows the loss of an animal companion. Yeah, it's it's very, you know, it's very difficult. It is. And especially, I mean, I have not really talked about it, but it's many years ago when our kitty cat, she was very ill and the doctors, they told us, listen, you have one more day. She can stay with you because on the end, you know that the end it's coming and you want to stretch it because you think about you, but then you have to put their needs in front of your feelings. And uh, I remember it was like, and it comes back. I mean, I will catch myself in tears. I mean, so many, I mean, it has passed, you know, a few years and I have, uh, uh, you know, our kiddies pictures in the studio in our home. And the moment when I see it and I just, I'm vulnerable, I feel like a little child. And I know a lot of people were the same story, you know, they feel the same way, you know, and I think it doesn't matter age, it doesn't matter you know, where you were born, are you a man or a woman, are you a child, what really matters, it's like uh, the relationship you had with your four That's babies it. and mm -hmm. how you can give yourself permission to continue living and living with their legacy, but that's where you come, you know, in place that I actually, I'm so grateful that we kind of, I would say, discover you that, you know, like, Stephanie, it's here with us because, I mean, obviously it makes sense, but it's such a special, unique thing, what you do, you know, helping people when, and to pass, you know, to kind of pass their own fears and, and handle the grief. And it's so amazing that you had created so many helpful tools in your YouTube and website. And, you know, like, I just have to say, so our, you know, uh, last magazine issue, which as we know, the new one, it's on the way. Uh, and like your article, uh, it's absolutely amazing. And one of my friends, uh, their mother-in-law passed, and her doggy passed away. And uh, the first thing I thought is, oh, we have Stephanie. Aww. Stephanie gave us article and we had our life. And, you know, because we know that in the magazine, we do have also the virtual part of it trying to find here our amazing article but like let's so i'm like two pages of ways you know to overcome grief and just seven tips to help you get through a day you know that's very special it's really important to me when i'm whether i'm in a one-on-one -on -one session with the client or i'm educating which is what i call what we're mm -hmm. doing now this is education um that people come away with some practical ideas for what they can do, not to ever make their grief go away because it, that's not what happens. But I really want people to have an understanding. I wanna to try to simplify and provide really fact and experience-based information about what they're going through as opposed to just platitudes you know that because if you do a if you do a search on just put grief in google or even pet loss grief in google 
a lot of what you're going to get back are platitudes, you know, things like everything happens for a reason, uh, they're in a better place, those kinds of, and you're going to get that level of what's called support, but I don't really find that to be supporting at all. So I like to try to make sure that I can help people understand what they're experiencing, why they're feeling what they're feeling, and what that looks like in living with it day to day, um, and how to navigate that whole experience. Check out our Pet Fix World uh, magazine. It's really a lot of fun. It's the first hybrid magazine. What is hybrid? It has videos. It has some of the lives of uh, some of the interviews I do with people and pet parents from all around the world. It's a lot of fun. Find our magazine in Amazon when you look under Pet Fix World or go to our website petfixworld.com and check it out. At the end of the day, it's a lot of fun. So enjoy the rest of the podcast. Yeah, and as you are talking about this as well, I think that probably a lot of times when you go and read all of this information, it's a kind of if I can put it into words, a little more of a generic, because each of us, we accept the grief for, you know, in a different ways. So I feel it's like you have a, you know, let's say you have a headache, right? Well, is your headache on the left or the right or in the on top of your forehead? So I feel that that's why, you know, like people uh, working with you and reading more like, uh, some of your materials you have created they would get more of a um, special attention and just kind of with them you can work on the areas in their grief they right. need to heal yeah yeah that's that's why I do what I do I really do I it's vitally important to me that people understand they're not alone because grief is a very isolating experience just by its very nature and then the loss of animals is even it's it's an extra layer of isolation because it's a disenfranchised loss which we talked about this on when we first met but just for those who um didn't hear that a disenfranchised loss is any loss that isn't readily acknowledged honored and recognized by the society at large and so disenfranchised loss leads to disenfranchised grief. So at the top of that list is the loss of, of an animal companion. But other disenfranchised losses include things like miscarriages, um, murder and suicide. In currently, even COVID deaths are very much disenfranchised death, which means the grief we experience after that is is disenfranchised and so it's it's especially isolating because you you don't really know with whom you're safe to share your grief when you're talking in general but especially not when you're talking about the death of a dog or a cat or a bird um you just don't know how it, where it's safe for you to share what you're feeling I do agree with you completely because especially knowing that, you know, pets are family all around the world, but we know that a lot of our, uh, you know, some people we know, we think we know might feel slightly different. Yes. And, uh, you know, for some of them, even I am considered crazy because I'm yes. a pet photographer and I'm so like, I live and breathe uh, the pet, you know, the pet world. And so you're right that you want to share with them, but then they may not necessarily are open to hear it. And also a lot of times, even if they have the best intentions, they may not know how to give you the advice for you to be yes. able to heal it. Yes. Because that's why you go to, like, I never will forget, like, for example, you want to make change in your home, you ask your you know, family member, they would say, I move this table from left to right. But yes. then if you ask the interior designer, they would say, oh, how about you bring it here in the back because of the space, you know, and et cetera. So, and of course, exactly. nothing to compare, but it's true. Yeah, 
it, well, it makes a difference. And when you make the choice to talk to a grief counselor, I mean, and you're absolutely right. When you make the choice to talk to a professional, that's the relationship you have. It's a professional relationship. So that frees you up. You know, if, if we're just friends, and you're talking to me about this loss of, say, the loss of your cat. We never stop being friends, which means even just subconsciously, we're both aware of the fact that we have this relationship. And that goes double when it's family members. You know, you don't stop being a partner and just become this objective professional to help you deal with your grief. You know, you can't do that. So you go to a professional to provide you with that distance so that you're free. You don't have to worry about, are you going to hurt my feelings? You don't have to worry about, hopefully, that I'm ever going to say anything that's going to hurt your feelings. You know, it's a professional relationship, but one in which you are completely safe to express everything that you feel and to question everything that's happening to you so true so true to be honest with you because you can trust the professional i mean it's like it's absolutely true and you know in my head always come the the examples with photography of course uh, like people they think oh this outfit uh, it's so so nice on me but then for pictures purposes, you know, exactly. might not be the most flattering. And that's why we come in place to say, well, let's take a couple of pictures your way, but let's change to this outfit because you may look better and which typically end up being better. So the same it's with you and the fact that it's confidential. Yes. And, you know, it's only between you and the person. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's, you know, sometimes has you know, a lot to do with it. And to be honest with you, I have uh, one of my clients for many, many years, her doggy's name was Crackers. She, I think it's three, probably at least three years since Crackers left us, she still doesn't have a doggy and she's still going to grieve. And uh, every time when she sees, I still post once in a while her, you know, Crackers pictures with her permission, she she messaged me, she thanks me, she says, Vasi, thank you. But it shows you that if you don't take care of it, kind of don't let it out, however it is. I mean, if, if you like write a letter, I don't know, or read the magazine, just, and, you know, you still need to kind of consider it that sometimes we maybe need a slightly different approach. And, and, and especially, I mean, with some four babies, we have a little spe like with every four baby we have different type of bond of but i feel that with some of them we have a little more yeah and it's like it just breaks my heart it and is. It is. it's devastating it is devastating and one thing i really what i kind of wanted to remind to people if this is i hope everyone will i will make sure i link our first uh, conversation and podcast but I would uh, I remember that when you said when people lose their fur babies and if you uh, if you are their friend and you ask them what they need was make sure you bring you know you can send them some food or extra tissue because yeah. people sometimes forget I mean to eat to drink uh, water yes. and yeah. you know they don't like to go out uh, you know, even to outside, to step outside. So, exactly. yeah, yeah. I, I often say when I'm asked, you know, how can I help someone who's grieving? <clears throat> my, my basic response to that is say less and do more. Wow. You know, just yeah. say less and do more. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be in a big way. You know, you can pick up, you can go somewhere and pick up a couple of um, Applebee's gift cards and drop them in someone's mailbox, you yes. know, just, and, and then send a text that says, hey, um, there's something in your mailbox. When you get out there, just make sure you don't throw it away. Mm -hmm. and, and that's it. And how much trouble is that? Yeah. That's, that's no trouble. And that can make all the difference in the world for someone, yeah. you know? Absolutely. They need it. They need it. And, um, Again, what would you tell people 
who may are thinking, okay, I could have done this to prevent it. What would you tell them? Okay, that's a big one. And, um, you know, I we could talk about this for hours and hours. I'm about sure. Guilt. Are you a passionate pet business owner who wants to grow your business? It's easy peasy, friend. Go to our website, petpixworld.com. Check out our marketing and advertising opportunities, and you're going to discover more about our first hybrid pet magazine, which is actually in Amazon and other major magazine platforms. Uh, and it has video opportunities. Our podcast is in the 0.5% globally ranked podcast. Imagine people being able to reach out to you and your brand from all around the world. We have amazing social media. We do a lot of lives and broadcasts. We can showcase to the world your incredible new product and so much more. At the end of the day, let's help our pet community to get to know you and your products. So enjoy the rest of the podcast. But there is, there are a couple of things that I would remind people about guilt. And let me, let me begin by saying what I'm going to offer here is just very general. If, if you are living with crippling guilt, and some people are, then I really encourage you to come see me or come see someone else. And, and that's not me drumming up, trying to drum up business. That's just that what I can offer in a general way in a podcast is, I believe, helpful and may make a difference in your experience, but it really needs to be addressed on an individual basis in a, in a one-on-one -on -one session. So, but in general, there are a couple of reasons that the guilt that we experience in the grief of animal loss is so overwhelming. The first and foremost reason is because euthanasia is an option for us when it comes to our animal children, that it's not, at least in most areas of the world, for humans. And so, while euthanasia is a loving and courageous decision, and it is, that's, it's a loving and courageous decision, and one of the hardest that we ever have to make. Unfortunately, it doesn't make the grief afterwards any easier. And I think that's terribly unfair. I think that if we go through such a hard decision that that does require courage and is made from love, then at the very least, there should be some payoff when we're grieving. We should get some comfort from it, but it doesn't work that way. And in fact, what it does do all too often is cause guilt. The main reason though, that guilt is so overpowering when we're grieving is because the mind would rather feel guilty than feel helpless. Wow. And we are never more helpless than we are in the face of death. So even though we're miserable when we're caught up in the speculative, distorted thought pattern of, well, what if I'd done this and I could have done that? And, and look, this would have happened if I'd done this or I hadn't done that. Even though that's miserable for us, our mind still prefers that particular misery than it does the misery of sitting in the helplessness of death. Because we are completely helpless in the face of death. We can never bring them back, no matter what. We can never call them back from the dead. Another aspect of this that is really kind of insidious is that so long as we're in that speculative thinking, it's like a fantasy in our mind that they're still alive, that there's still a possibility to make just the right decision in which they don't die. It's like magical thinking. I know that it doesn't, doesn't feel like magical thinking. It certainly doesn't. 
but it is a kind of magical as in it's it's creates this fantasy that as long as i'm as miserable as i am as long as i'm in that world where i'm thinking about what she looked like and how she was acting two days before she died and what i did and what i didn't do there's still a chance for me to make a change and have her not die in the end of it so when i work with people in regards to guilt the best thing that i've found to help them is to get them to be less terrified about sitting with the helplessness of death itself coming to terms coming to the acceptance of the reality of the death and that getting there can help with the overwhelming aspects of the guilt this is very interesting how the mind creates this world oh, and you yes. kind of need the your guidance a guidance to someone to hold your hand and kind of bring you back to the real world and I know that it was devastating and I mean at least if there is some type of comfort to be honest with you you know we are very fortunate we have pictures at least a little bit we have videos and etc we at least can see them and we know that we did our best or at least I hope we know we did our best but it is it, it is very hard you know and I always believe that from all this, you know, what you go through, I always keep saying, turn it to a superpower fuel. And maybe, you know, and again, I mean, you're the professional. You may tell me, Bas, you're not right. And by the way, hi to everyone who is watching us live. Hi, friends. If you have questions, please write them. Or on, in, on Facebook, you can DM me personally. I can see them. Uh, but I know that... Uh, I, my doggies, when I was growing up, we don't have any pictures of them. One of the reasons why I do what I do. Well, I picture it like it's imprinted in my heart when our oldest dog is Sunny, kind of looked at us, me and my sister. I mean, I was a teenager, maybe I was 14, 15 years old. I don't really remember. She was in the front of our uh, bedroom, my sister and I's bedroom. She looked at us for a permission to leave us and she left us. And many years later, and even afterwards, I realized, my God, I have, I don't have even one picture. Uh, but after we lost her, I said to myself, do you know what? This is one of the reasons why I would do what I do. And do you think that sometimes encouraging people to kind of also think in the different types of outlets of their grief to do something good may be a good way? For them oh absolutely i call that what you did and what you're describing i call that giving purpose to the pain wow it's absolutely the single best thing that you can possibly do when you feel helpless help someone that's the quickest way to get out of your own helplessness is when you feel helpless help someone the other part that makes giving purpose to the pain so powerful is that it strengthens our continuing bond with the dead. You know, every time that you, every single time that you take a photograph of an animal, whether you're consciously thinking about it or not, you are connecting yourself to Sunny. I yeah. mean, it's automatic. Thank you. For the rest of your life. Thank you. She is, uh, you know, we, we had her daughter and we had her granddaughter, but it's something about Sunny, which is beyond special to me. And when we created this year, uh, Pet Picks Pup Fashion Week, which we are about to have our new one in, November, in October, when I was creating the marketing materials, which was international night. And I said, you know what? I, I, I think always about everyone other than myself. And I said, well, I need to say what I do, why I do it. I actually have a 
personal element in everything what I do. So I tried to, I found a picture, which it looks like Sunny of a Doberman. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know what? This will be my Sunny. <laughs> so, and that's perfect. Yeah, that's, that's perfect. how I did it. Thank you. Thank you so much. You know, coming from you, it means a lot. And as we know now as a community, Mary Ellen, who is our admin and very dear friend for, to me, I mean, she lost Lenai. And uh, I told her, I said, Lenai physically may not be with us, but we added her name to the magazine under, you know, memorial, you know, celebration of life. That's how we, we decided to, uh, you know, to call it. And then the first month we had, in, you know, in honor of uh, Lenai. And then the second month, it's actually here. She, like, we were doing the layout. And and it wasn't there. She used the, the old layout. I'm so, I'm like, listen, woman, Lenai <laughs> needs to be there. Don't take my Lenai. And now uh, for our Pop Fashion Week, we are going actually to be doing a special fundraising event with some of Lenai's, like her gowns. She she wore only one time. And we have a, a Graciela who is a very talented designer. So she uh, she sent so she's sending a crown matching oh, the dress wonderful. so we haven't announced it officially but i hope that with this i am uh, encouraging people to really see that uh you can do it i mean i know so yes. many you can absolutely. do absolutely and you know you can do it. it it doesn't always have to be in a big way i mean yes. it really uh, something that i oh that's wonderful yeah it's here with my grandparents and yes, my grand grandma right. Oh, yeah. and yeah, that's perfect. Thank you. That's so anyway, perfect. thank that's you. Perfect. Our legacy. That's right. Our legacy. That's what it is. They will, you know, they will continue living with us. Uh, but do. it's important. You know, I cannot thank you enough. I, and I really mean every single word for you sharing with us. Because friends, Stephanie stepped in. And she said, and you did it. She said, you said, I will send you an article. So here we are, first article. We did the first live. Now you were so generous to send us a second article for the new upcoming issue, which we almost done, friends. We are planning, you know, to uh, launch it very soon. You also have uh, a fantastic uh, YouTube channel with a lot of content. Like friends, uh, you have to subscribe to, uh, you know, to Stephanie's website. So you just sent only when it's needed these wonderful emails and like uh, with all the materials you have. And even before we started recording, you said, I have like one thing what I'm passionate about is to give a lot of materials and stuff for people to be able to read on the, you know, by themselves. But of course we know if you feel that you want more of a personal attention, maybe more of a, I cannot say that there it's a fast track mm -hmm. and a shortcut, but if you at least would like to try to address it and work on it earlier rather than later, you know, people can go to your website and book time with you one-on-one uh, -on -one to, uh, you know, to talk to you at least, to try to work on it because it's it's a process. It's it's hard. It is. It's very hard. Yeah. And the, um, I do... I've I've complained for years that there's a lot of misinformation out there about grief, and there is. Um, wow. It is really just since I went into private practice, and and since just starting um, to really have a social media presence, which I didn't really start until April of this year. Oh, wow. I'm finally doing something about it. You know, in the past, the, um, this traditional route of, well, you write a book and then you try to sell that book and then people have to buy that book and you have that. That's great. That's wonderful. And it's something I've tr been told I need to do many times. But what I'm doing now with the YouTube channel is I feel like I'm writing the book and getting it out there in like three to five minute videos. And nobody has to pay for it. There's no middle person distributing it. I mean, YouTube, but you know what I mean. It's not, I do. 
the much less traditional way. And it goes literally all over the world. I mean, I had my, my furthest out client so far has been uh, someone from Mallorca, Spain. I had oh, to, yeah. wow. It just, and she's not my first, but that's my, my furthest wow. out one. But it just means I, I had um, a, a woman in Serbia DM me the other wow. day and tell me what a difference the YouTube videos were making to her in wow. her world where she felt like she had no support. So that is why I'm getting more and more and more passionate about this aspect of doing what I do. It's incredible. And I can tell you being from Bulgaria, which is next door to Serbia with our culture, we don't have anything like this. Like even for like even for a photography, becoming a pet photographer, pet, my friends thought I'm the craziest person in this planet. Uh, and now through all of us being united, loving for babies and speaking, or at least, you know, learning second language to speak the same language and being able to connect and, and being able to learn from you. And I know your community is very strong community because I remember the posts they did uh, on our on our YouTube channel, the video you and I, we did. It was pretty incredible. I mean, a lot of people. And here it's my doggy barking yeah. saying, hi. Hi, baby. Okay, Chico, do you want to come here for a second? Okay, let me just so, show you very quick Chico here before he wants to. Okay, so this is my boy. He's typically... Yeah. Okay. Hello, Chico. Hello, baby. Yeah. He's saying, I want the snack. <laughs> it's a snack. <laughs> oh my God. But you know, it's it's definitely, you know, really uh fantastic the way you know you can help people. And I would encourage everyone uh on Facebook friends when you're watching this and any type of social media, I will make sure you know you already have uh you know Stephanie's contact information. And, uh, you know, make sure you just go and connect with her. And are there any other tips you may or recommendation you may would like to share with people? Oh, my goodness. I know it's a lot. Yeah, there's so many. Um, yeah, I, I trust yourself. You know how to grieve. People come to me and say, I... I don't know what I'm doing. I, I don't know. I, is this right? Am I doing this wrong? There is no right way to grieve. There is no wrong way to grieve. There is only your way to grieve. You know how to do this. Listen to your intuitive voice, the voice in your gut. When it tells you, when you feel moved, when you feel called, to do something or say something or write something or put something out there in honor of your beloved dead, do it. Don't let the mind that comes in that is, the mind is tainted by society at large. Oh, what are they gonna think? They're gonna laugh at me. They're gonna not understand. Just put that away. You know how to grieve. So trust yourself yeah trust yourself i like this trust yourself i know that you are not lonely no you yeah you're not alone you know there are so many people around the world around the globe who are going through this process uh and who are you know grieving but i would say be in the category of the brave ones who at least can admit it to themselves. And yeah. if you feel that you may need a little help, know that help is available. Because yeah. again, I didn't even know that, you know, such a, I would say like a, such a service exists and it's a, it's on a separate note, but as you know, I, I do have my personal coach and uh, even easy for a different topic, but for years, I was like, oh, you don't need a coach. You can do it yourself. You go, you listen, you watch these YouTube videos for motivation and you can make it work until I actually start 
working with my coach and, and I saw, oh my gosh, actually you can change your life. Yeah. And yeah, and you can help people to really, you know, help them with grief, which I think it's pretty fascinating. And yeah. I cannot thank you enough for coming with us on the show and just again, for writing the amazing article. I cannot wait for people, you know, to read the new article. And just the last question, like what did it inspire you about the right, the, the new article? Because we are going to add this to the new article, like a couple of words oh, about the new article. Oh my goodness, Bossy. I don't even remember which one I sent you. What well, did I send you? Well, um, uh, people will see. Let me, oh. let me just look real quickly. Okay. Well, I can I'm sorry that. I throw you uh, like. No, that's okay. Well, friends, that's right. I can tell you an a amazing secret that Stephanie said that she will keep giving us, uh, you know, uh, articles like very yeah. regularly, which I'm so grateful and beyond thankful to you because again, this having it as a opportunity for us to learn, it's very special. Well, thank you. Thank you. Well, this, this next article is actually about how to help grieving animals. Wow. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, which is something I get asked fairly often. Um, first of all, do animals grieve? And they absolutely do. And how can I help my animals in their grief? So that's what this this next wow. article. So I hope, friends, you don't miss this one. Stay tuned on Stephanie and Pet Picks World uh, social media. Uh, and just, I know it's a thing because Mary Ellen's second doggy, um, you know, he is absolutely struggling. Like die, he's struggling. He goes to the bed of his sister. And, you know, of course she's not there. So, I mean, even Chiku was really like very devastated because there wasn't a kitty cat running around the house. Yeah. And, uh, it's, it's a thing. So I'm grateful. I know. And I am actually looking forward to reading the article because I haven't, I have not read it yet, you know, but I'm waiting. I, I cannot wait. You're to so it. busy. I can't believe that you can read anything ever. <laughs> Do you know what? I do have the magazine next to me. So Sunday, it's typically my days. Like I can uh, do You can things. actually read it. Yeah, yeah, I can actually read. And actually after hour, when everyone is in bed, everyone in my house is sleeping. And I wake up from, uh, I guess, the first nap at one mm -hmm. in the morning and I cannot get, go back to sleep. So typically that's the time when, you know, I have the opportunity to read and to get inspired and try to figure out a way how we can help more people and you're such a blessing so thank you well, so you very much us. you're doing such wonderful work and i'm just honored to be a little part of it i really am thank you thank you we are doing it together and can you tell people you know where they can find you on social media absolutely um well the the best place is to just go to my website which is embracingyourgrief.com um, the social links are all there. Um, so that's the easiest place to get to them. But if you just search it, your social, your favorite social media place for embracing your grief, I'm going to come up um, because probably my, my largest presence is on um, Instagram and TikTok um, currently. But um, yeah, and not long term. There's my little dog. Yeah, saying hi to That's everyone. Fancy. Yeah, <laughs> fancy saying hi. <laughs> um, but my longest term presence is, of course, on Facebook. Embracing your grief on Facebook. But if you just look up embracing your grief, most anywhere, I'm going to come up. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, don't worry, we are used to doggies, kitty cats, uh, birds, well, talking. Yeah, she, you know? she um, I'm sure it's somebody probably three blocks over and she hears them. Oh and God, she's telling them not to come on her street. Oh my God, that's adorable. Oh yeah, yeah they're very, like we know when the Amazon truck is here, oh the postman, gosh. you know, you name it, everyone. Trashman, the trash, oh my gosh, yeah. 
it's so funny. Like the days when I know that they're typically coming, I try to not to don't schedule any. Like I do too. I try not to schedule clients in that yeah. time. I just do. It's not easy, but it's amazing. So thank you very much, Stephanie, sincerely for being with thank us today you. on the show. We love you. We thank you. And uh, I'm very excited and grateful for you. So friends, you know, the new magazine, it's coming. Make sure that you, you know, read it. Also go back to the old one, which is available in Amazon and also our website. Uh, and make sure that uh, you go and follow Stephanie EmbraceYourGrief.com in her website and YouTube channel, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, you name it. <laughs> you get tired of seeing my face. Here. Oh, no, listen, we love your face. And I love the fact that you're so consistent. So thank you very much. Have an thank amazing you, and wonderful heart. day. And yeah. friends, believe in yourself and know that we are here for you as a community, as Stephanie, as Vasi, and just we are here to help you. So DM us, send us pictures, send us whatever you like. Uh, and just, you know, thank you for your time for watching. I hope you also share because especially this topic, it's so uh, special. And honestly, a lot of people don't admit it, but yeah. they more maybe need it yeah. because all of us, each of us have lost either two or four legs, you know, yeah. special yeah. person at some yeah. point in our lives. And it's and never. If we haven't, we will. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. Oh my God. That's why I keep taking pictures. Yes. Whatever it is. You know, yeah. I tell people, it doesn't matter makeup, no makeup, you know, if you use makeup yes. or when you yeah. don't use, you know, just hug your, you know, two legs, four legs child and do the, the picture. At least have it. You don't need to showcase everything to the world, but have it for you. For That's everything. right. Yeah. So thank you. We love right. you. Thank Peace you and you best. And love see you me. soon. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for listening to this podcast episode. I really, truly hope you enjoyed it. You learned some new tips and tricks. You feel inspired. Please go below in the description. Uh, follow our amazing speaker. Go and say hi. Also, check out our website, petpixworld.com, and you're going to discover we have great free classes. We also have our new community. We have finally, all of us as passionate pet parents or businesses, we can connect in one place. We also have a lot of resources specifically only for our website tribe. Yay! Please show us your support. Leave us a review. You can find our podcast in all of the major podcast platforms from all around the world. And don't forget, we have a fantastic, very unique magazine. So you can find our magazine in Amazon when you search for Pet Picks World magazine in our website and other magazine platforms. So lastly, don't forget, we are here if you'd like to be highlighted, if you know for any fundraising events you'd like for us to share with you, just let us know. So thank you, continue, enjoy it, and see you next time in our next podcast episode. This is Vasi, your host and passionate pet mom, exactly like you. So see you soon.